Welcome to Science 360, The Developing Brain. I'm Casey Rawson from Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center. The human brain is an amazing organ that not only controls our physical senses, basic body functions, and movement, but also stores our memories and processes our emotions and thoughts. Many of the questions about just how the brain does these things are still unanswered, but scientists are learning more about the brain every day. In this program, we'll explore how a baby's brain develops during pregnancy and how some scientists are studying the developing brain and things that can harm it. Let's begin by studying two people whose brains developed differently while their mothers were still pregnant with them. This picture combines half of one person's head with half of another person's. You may notice that the person on the left has a smaller head, smaller eyes, a shorter upturned nose, less of a groove between the nose and mouth, and thinner lips with less shape than the person on the right. If we could look at the brains of these two people, we would see differences there as well, differences that are related to the different facial features. The brain of the person on the left is smaller overall. In addition, there is one particular structure in the brain on the left that is much smaller than the same structure in the brain on the right. This structure is known as the corpus callosum. It kind of looks like a cross-section of the top of a mushroom. The corpus callosum is the part that allows the two sides, or hemispheres, of the brain to talk to each other. As you might imagine, having a corpus callosum that is too small can cause serious communication problems within the brain. To understand why these brains are different, First, we need to understand how people and their brains develop. A developing baby grows inside the mother in a place called the uterus. A baby starts out as a single cell. A cell is the building block of all living things. The cell divides and divides some more until eventually a fully formed human baby is created. In the first eight weeks, the developing baby is called an embryo. In those weeks, the embryo begins to develop recognizable features such as eyes, nose, and fingers. After eight weeks and until it's born, the baby continues to develop and is called a fetus. After spending about nine months inside its mother, the baby is ready to be born. Years later, it becomes a fully functional adult that has 100 trillion cells. Remember, we are interested in the brain, so let's consider at what point in the pregnancy we begin to see parts of the brain. By the time the embryo is in the middle of its third week, as in this picture, the part that will become the brain is beginning to be clear. At this point, the embryo is still very small. How small? Smaller than a tennis ball. Smaller than a golf ball. Even smaller than a penny. In fact, an embryo in the third week would fit inside the zero on this penny. This early in the pregnancy, most women won't even know that they're pregnant. Here's what the embryo looks like during the following week. That's the fourth week at about 26 days after conception. You're looking at the outside of the embryo. The brain is forming inside. You see the head and where the mouth will be. At 26 days, human brain cells are developing at the rate of 250,000 every minute. At this point in the pregnancy, Many women still won't know they're pregnant. Brain cells continue to divide in the later weeks of pregnancy, and connections are made between them until birth and beyond. The surface area of the brain increases, resulting in the formation of wrinkles and ridges. By the time of birth, the normal brain will look like this model, although it will continue to grow and develop throughout childhood and adolescence. But things can go wrong. Genetic or environmental factors can cause problems. When this happens, babies can be born with physical or mental limitations, known as birth defects. Now that we know how the human brain normally develops, we can talk about the external or environmental factors that can sometimes cause that development to go wrong. During pregnancy, the mother and baby are connected so that the baby can get the nutrients and oxygen it needs to grow. Because of this close connection, Almost everything the mother is exposed to in her environment reaches the developing baby too. What the mother breathes, eats, and drinks also enters the baby. 
In some cases, these external or environmental factors may harm the baby. One of the most dangerous substances for a developing baby is alcohol. For example, wine, hard liquor, or beer. When a pregnant woman drinks alcohol, the alcohol passes from the mother into the developing baby. This alcohol can damage the developing baby's brain as well as other tissues and organs. About 1 in 10 women drink alcohol while they are pregnant. When humans are born with brain abnormalities caused by alcohol, the condition is known as fetal alcohol syndrome, or FAS. When people have FAS, they have trouble learning, solving problems, or understanding cause and effect and long-term consequences. For example, someone with FAS may not understand that if they cheat on a test, they may be suspended from school. Remember, the brain begins to develop in the third week of pregnancy, before many women even know they're pregnant. Alcohol can cause brain damage at any stage of development in pregnancy. The kinds and severity of brain defects vary depending on when the alcohol exposure occurs. Very frequently, when there is brain damage from alcohol, the baby's face can look perfectly normal. Regardless of the severity of the disease, however, fetal alcohol syndrome is irreversible and its effects will last a lifetime. Now, let's look at how scientists are using animal models to model how alcohol can affect the developing brain. Scientists are interested in studying the causes of conditions like fetal alcohol syndrome so they can be prevented in the future. Scientists can learn how alcohol affects human embryos and fetuses by studying animals such as fish, sheep, chickens, or mice. Can you tell which of these is the human embryo? Although they come from three different animals, these embryos look almost alike because many organisms share a similar pattern of development. One organism that is often used when studying human conditions is the mouse. Because mouse embryos and human embryos form in very similar ways, we are confident that what we can learn from studying mice can be applied to humans. Mice develop over a much shorter period of time, however, and are born after only 20 days. Scientists can use mice to study external factors that some pregnant women are exposed to, such as alcohol. Scientists at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill have discovered that when pregnant mice are given high doses of alcohol, the baby mice are more likely to be born with birth defects that affect the face and the brain. These are images of the brains of three mice. The one on the far right is normal. The ones on the left and in the middle are not. Notice how small the front part of the brain is. These brains come from mice whose mothers were given alcohol during pregnancy. These same abnormalities that appear in mice can also appear in human babies who have been exposed to alcohol before birth. Smaller head size, changes in facial features, differences in brain structures, learning disabilities. Now you know that all of these can be caused by introducing alcohol to the developing brain. Thank you for watching Science 360, The Developing Brain. I hope you learned something about brain development and how scientists study the important role that external factors like alcohol can play during pregnancy.